It's time for April favorites. I don't even really remember much of April because I was sick for the first literally two weeks of the month. The month was a bit of a blur, but I do have some things to tell you about, so let's get into it. I have a couple of makeup things to tell you about. The first is what's on my lips because it's the most obvious and I recently picked up the Aromi Liquid Lipstick in Electric Orchid. This is now the third one of these that I have and I love the color. It has actually replaced my Bourjois Rouge Edition Velvet in Ole Flamingo. The colors are very, very similar and once I got this, I realized I didn't need the other one, so I sent it to my sister because she was really admiring it when I was visiting her in California and we did that video together. I love the color. What I will say about this, and I've been wearing it all month, the formula of this one is slightly different than the other two that I have, Preppy Red and Power Red. For some reason, it's more liquidy and it doesn't go on as opaque as the other two that I have, so I'm not the biggest fan of that. It just seems like the formula is more watery. So if any of you have experienced something similar either with Electric Orchid or with other Aromi liquid lipsticks, let me know because I'm not sure if I got a bad one or if this one is just a little bit different than the other ones. Next is something that is potentially a little bit surprising because as a dry skinned girl, I rarely wear powder. But this month I have been digging out my 100% pure, healthy, flawless skin foundation powder in white peach. I've had this for, um, a couple of years probably. I remember I was watching a Cloudy Apples video many years ago and she raved about this as being a wonderful powder foundation that doesn't cake up and just looks really nice and has great ingredients. Sorry. It's not inexpensive and I'm glad that I'm finally getting some use out of it. I've been applying it with the Real Techniques Multitask brush so I'll just kind of pack a fair amount of product on because I find that it doesn't kick up a lot and I'll actually use this under my eyes, cheeks, nose, and chin just to set all of my cream or liquid products in place. And like, guys, I kind of get powder now. Like, I don't think I ever used to really get it before. <laughs> or my skin was just so dry that it looked awful. And now I kind of feel like because my skin is a little bit more normal versus extremely dry, I like the kind of little bit of additional coverage. It really does make my face makeup last. And now that we're kind of going into spring and summer, I feel like that's a really good thing. The next thing is another makeup brush and it is the Real Techniques Duo Fiber Contour Brush. So if you remember my wish list video, I had this Real Techniques Duo Fiber set on my wish list. This is the one I've gotten the most use out of and actually one of my absolutely amazing subscribers in France sent me her gently used set of these and I just thought it was so incredibly sweet of her and she gave me like some other goodies in the package too. And it So this is the one I've been using the most and what I really, really like it for is for blending out cream blush. So prior to getting this, I mostly have been relying, and you can see this one is dirty, this one is not. I have had mostly been relying on the Real Techniques stippling brush to blend out cream blush and I still do quite like this. This one is just softer and nicer. So what I feel like it's really good for is you, so you I deposit color on my cheeks with my fingers and then I love kind of like blending out the edges with this brush. And it's just so soft. It gives a really diffused look to the edge whereas with this one I feel like it's more I end up blending too much and the shape too of this one I think lets you just kind of work with the edges so that you keep color kind of where you want it if that makes sense. So the next two products will probably, ooh, I'm trying like not to lift my <laughs> arms because I definitely did not shave my armpits for this video. Um, the next two products will not be all that surprising if you watched my one of my recent makeup videos where I did peach cheeks and the technique of using winged liner halfway through the eye, halfway across the eye. I cannot speak coherently today. I know that it's not a green product and I also know that I don't think you can get this anymore. This is Chanel Reflex and it's I'm pretty sure a discontinued Chanel blush and it's just the only peach blush that I have and I think it's gorgeous and I literally have been wearing this every single day for the last two weeks when I have not been sick this month. Um, so yeah, I just had to mention it because I've been wearing it all month and I'm 
absolutely obsessed with peach blush right now. And it's the only one I have. And I'm kind of like, is that enough? Do I want another? What am I doing? And then you guys know that I'm completely obsessed with the Zuzu Luxe Liquid Eyeliner in Raven. And my favorite for the month has really just been the technique. Because I have relatively big round eyes, I guess, I've never been the kind of person who's concerned about my eyes looking small. So I'm always like, I'll line the lower waterline, I'll take my liner all the way in. All the things they tell you not to do to close your eyes in and make them look smaller, I do because it's not a concern of mine. But I was really surprised when I started winging out the liner but only bringing it in halfway to my eye. It really creates like a different look on the face as opposed to taking the line no matter how thin all the way into the eye. So I just have been literally doing that every day for kind of like a daytime work appropriate look. I feel like it just it makes your eyes look so big and open and even though I don't worry about my eyes looking small, it's still a nice technique and I've really been loving it this month. I have one skincare favorite this month and actually I have come upon a nice little stash of skincare samples from a couple of people. Rue from Short Small Sweet gave me some. I got to meet one of my lovely, lovely, amazing um, subscribers and commenters, Jamie, who was visiting Boston and town from New Jersey. So we met up and I got to meet her adorable daughter and we had coffee and she gave me some skincare samples. In one of the last times that I met up with Rue, she gave me just a plethora of amazing skincare samples. And one of the things was this Leilani mermaid mask. This product has kind of like cult status, I feel like, in the green beauty blogger community. And I had never tried it, and I've been intrigued because people rave about it so much. It's And it's green, and it has algae, and raw honey, and lots of really amazing ingredients. So I used this a couple times this month, and I really, really liked it. It's extremely good for hydrating the skin, and it also just feels really pleasant when it's on. It has a very strong kind of citrus smell. And when you rinse it off, it just, your skin feels plump and moist and hydrated and nourished and it's really lovely. So another reason I really like this is because it's quite affordable. I think a full size is in the $20 to $25 range. So for those of you looking for an affordable, high quality, moisturizing, hydrating mask, I think I'd really recommend this. I really have been enjoying it this month. One little hair favorite, which I think I've talked about before, potentially in a favorites video, but if not, definitely in the hair care video that I did last summer, but I've been using it this month a lot, so I'll mention it. It's the John Masters Organics Hair Pomade, and I really like this for the second or third day that I'm styling my hair, not washing it. I try and go two to three days without washing my hair. Sometimes the third day is like sewer rat looking thing happening, but <laughs> a little dry shampoo on the roots and some of this on my ends kind of gives my hair a little bit of like pieciness, grip if I want to like put it up in a bun kind of definition, shine. I just really like this as an all natural hair definer and it smells really really nice it has tons of different essential oils it kind of has um like a woodsy cedary sort of smell which i really really like the lifestyle products that i have to tell you about this month are perhaps not that surprisingly all kind of related to cleaning and i think it's because i was sick after i was finally feeling better I was like, the air and energy in my home just felt stagnant. You, do you know what I mean? Just kind of like really went to town, did a deep clean, and it felt really good. So the first thing that I don't think I've talked about on here yet is the Intelligent Nutrients Certified Organic Hand Sanitizer. I've had this for a number of years. It lives in my work bag. I got this on Spirit Beauty Lounge back in the day. And it's a great product. I, it has like a really nice kind of lemon vanilla scent. And it's just a standard uh, spray top. It hasn't gotten clogged, which I find can be a problem with these kinds of things. 
And yeah, it says it kills 99.99% .99 of germs, 100% non-toxic, certified organic. The next thing I think probably showed up when I bought it, and I don't think I've talked about it since, but I have ended up absolutely loving it, and I so highly recommend it if you're shopping on Beauty Habit, which is where they carry this. They may carry it elsewhere, but I get mine on Beauty Habit, and it's the Nieves Cloud of Protection Spray. This is basically a kind of an um, essential oil aromatherapy spray, but it has the effect of kind of feeling like it changes the energy or the vibes in a room. I really like spraying this around my bedroom, bathroom, living room after I've done a clean or between when I do clean my living space. I like to kind of freshen up the air and stuff with a couple spritzes of this. And then I thought I would just give you guys a gander at... <laughs> Wow, that sounded extremely geriatric to say. Some of my favorite cleaning products, and I probably could do a whole video on cleaning stuff in general, but then I was kind of like, I actually thought about it, but then I feel like it's kind of redundant. I feel like there's a lot of all natural cleaning videos out there, and I didn't know if I really had anything new to say, but I'll just show you these things. Now, I've been using the Honest Company Honest Multi-Surface Cleaner. This is in the scent White Grapefruit. You can see I'm almost out. Really enjoyed this. It's just a multi-purpose spray. I use this in the kitchen. I use this in pretty much everywhere except the bathroom. I use this. Here's how I feel about the Honest Company. I do think that it's a little bit kind of like gimmicky, and in general, I don't love brands that have like a celebrity behind them. I just think that they are very heavy into marketing and aesthetics and packaging, which I appreciate, but the Honest Company products actually do rate quite well. They are kind of overpriced, but for convenience sake. And then the there's wood floors in my home, so I really have been liking the Method Wood for Good Squirt and Mop. And Method is not as clean as something like the Honest Company. I got this on Vitacost and it was pretty affordable and I've just been liking it for I will sweep my floors and then after I've gotten kind of all the dirt and hair and dust up, I'll lay this down and dry mop it and it just leaves a really kind of nice scent and I've been enjoying it. I have subsequently come to find out that the Honest Company does make a wood floor cleaner as well, so I might opt for that after I finish up this method one just because I think the ingredients are a little bit better. But like after cleaning my space with you know, cleaning all the surfaces and doing the floors and doing all my sheets. I will burn Palo Santo. I will maybe spray the Nieves. I will light a candle. It's like it completely shifts the energy and it just feels really good. And I. So I have two YouTube channels to tell you about this month and. The first one is has become my new obsession. Thank you to Julie, my commenter, subscriber, amazing viewer, who if you go and watch my or go and look at the comments on my top YouTube channel video, she and I have like a 20 comment thread talking about this YouTube channel. It's the MMNL show. And you might already know about them. Maybe I'm just like extremely late to the game because they've been making videos for like three plus years. I wasn't hooked after the first video. I was kind of like, eh, because if you go watch them, they're not gonna resonate with everybody. They're kind of like quite high maintenance, spray tans, um, breast implants, Botox, a little valley girlish, but they're hilarious. Their dynamic together is so funny. They're really kind of, they can laugh at themselves, they have great senses of humor, don't take themselves too seriously, they're goofy and silly, and it's a channel all about their uh, beauty tips, tricks, hacks, everything related to beauty and lifestyle. Not from a green perspective, although they do really like Jane Iredale products. So if you want to kind of get into a new YouTube beauty channel, and laugh a lot. I will link some of my favorite videos of theirs down below. The second YouTube channel is a British fitness blogger YouTuber and her name is Carly Rowena. I think that I learned about her. She was just a recommended channel for me because I follow some fitness channels and her videos are great. It gives me like tons of new ideas for exercises to incorporate in my workouts. I will say I 
personally am not a mega fan of the super cut, buff, lean look on women. I kind of prefer to just look toned and in shape. I don't want a six pack. I don't want to look like shredded. This chick is like definitely shredded and badass. She recently like uploaded an ab workout with like very shredded looking abs and she has a really good leg workout. I just really have been enjoying getting new ideas for changing up my workout. And then music. <laughs> and I'm going to try and be brief, I promise, but I have three different music suggestions for you this month. The first thing is a mix by an artist. I can't really figure anything out about him, I think. And his name is Ido Lee. And on one of my videos, I can't remember which one, I was having a discussion with another house music lover who watches my videos, Nicole, and she sent me the link to this amazing mix. It's actually the full mix of his album called Visions. If, if any of you know Mark Farina's Mushroom Jazz compilations, it reminds me a lot of that sound, just very kind of like, yeah, lo-fi, jazzy, hip-hop, instrumental goodness mix. So I'll link that down below. It's on SoundCloud. The other album that I would recommend checking out if you're in the mood for kind of some really interesting, emotional, world-sounding music, I heard these two twin girls interviewed on NPR. Their group name is Ibaye as well, but they have a really interesting background. They are, I believe their mother is French. Their father was Afro-Cuban and they grew up in Paris. So they have this really interesting cultural background and a lot of Afro-Cuban um, kind of religion and culture influences their music. They like, lost their father when they were 11 and then they lost their sister several years after that. So their album really explores like themes of grief and sadness and emotion. And it's just like really, really beautiful music. I was totally taken with them after I heard the interview on NPR. So you can find their eponymous album on iTunes. And then the last thing, I can't believe it's finally time for me to talk to you guys about Tracy Thorne. Tracy Thorne is like her and Sade and Jesse Ware and Marie Dahlstrom and Jill Scott are like my top female vocalists like of all time. They are like my gateway to something otherworldly and divine and I just love them so much. But Tracy Thorne is like one of my, like I kind of get like emotional talking about her because her music has like such a special place in my life and it's so long standing. I discovered some songs this month that I didn't know about of hers and I don't know how I didn't know about them. They're um, dance music tracks or like they're remixed by house um, producers and DJs. The track that I found two remixes of is called Swimming. So there's a Vision Quest Ewan Pearson mix and a Charles Webster mix. Charles Webster I talked about in previous videos. I think I've even used a mix of his in a previous makeup video. Both of those mixes of that track are like so insane. I don't know how I didn't know about them. I will link them down below. And then I discovered another track of Tracy's called Grand Canyon. It's also a dance music track. If you are into Tracy Thorne or you like her voice, please leave me a comment and I will tell you the most amazing tracks of hers to check out. Ben Watt, her husband, has these amazing CD compilations called Lazy Dog that I discovered in like 2004 and they were like my gateway to house music. I'm completely rambling because I love Tracy Thorne and Ben Watt so <laughs> intensely. So guys, thanks for joining me for another month of natural beauty and lifestyle favorites. I really hope that you enjoyed this. I hope you got some ideas for new products and cleaning ideas and music and YouTube videos to go watch. I'll see you guys in another beauty video really soon. Thanks as always for watching, leaving me great comments. I think you guys are the best per usual and I just feel like I have to tell you that. So I'll talk to you later. Bye.